downtown Tampere with your host Vince and now we're on the air Hello VI people, party people, how are you guys doing? It's the weekend, it's Friday, I'm Vince, I'm your host, and this is the VI Podcast. We're just going to go ahead and listen to part 3 of the interview with Graham Bonnet, because the man sure got stories. We're going to be talking about auto-tune, a few Foo Fighters, uh, taking really crappy sound and videos and pictures and putting it on YouTube. You know, all that kind of stuff. I usually talk with people in the backstage regularly. And Graham Bonnet, he has the same sort of, same ideas, same issues, and pretty much similar views on life as a lot of people I know. So it's it's really nice to hear somebody of his level come out and talk about all this stuff, like honestly. So I'm really proud to share all of that with you guys. Uh, really quickly, just want to plug... We're going to be playing Jack the Rooster tomorrow night on 17th. And there's going to be John Westman, Julian Drain, and Sammy from White Flame. Sammy Pattaya, good old man from my band. And uh, we're going to play a half and half un and plugged show. So it's going to be half acoustic and half good old fashioned rock and roll. So definitely check that out. And definitely, let me, <laughs> let me check my notes here. Also, if you're if you're in Kovola today, uh, House Rock on the 16th, Graham Bonnet, and if you're in Imatra, go check out Graham and his band in Osmos Cosmos Bar. All right, hey, that's it. Let's go to the interview. So uh, yeah, bring on down. It had soul. It had soul or feeling. I call it feeling. It's not really soul, so it's go man. I mean, that's, that's more R and B, but um, it had feel. You know, that's that's what amazes me. And he was a big fan of um, Rainbow. I, I first met him back in 1979, I think it was. He, he came to um, the show with the drummer, you know, and uh, they used to hang out. They came for we did two nights in uh, in London in Wembley, Wembley um, Arena. And they were there both nights, and they just came back and said, we love your band. Oh, and Jeff Beck came along as well, which was kind of cool. Jeff Beck was one of my heroes. And uh, Richie Blackmore was very kind of like, oh, I didn't know he was in the audience. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a scary feeling when you meet yeah. your, your idols, like, for the first time. That's yeah. really... Yeah, but, but it was so funny because Richie had his own fame. And, I mean, Richie was like rated as one of the best guitarists around, you know, and he was worried about Jeff Beck being there, you know, which is kind of funny. And when the, the greatest comment I heard was, um, I had a friend of mine, you know who Rory Gallagher is? Uh, I know of him, yeah. yeah he's Irish guitar player. He, he we, we don't fish together, but I know who he is. He, he died a long, long time ago. He was an Irish blues player. And uh, Jimi Hendrix um, did the Woodstock show, you know, he played Woodstock. Yeah. And uh, one of the comments he made to a reporter, he came down the stairs <coughs> and the guy said to him, excuse me, Mr. Hendricks, what does it feel like to be the world's greatest guitar player? He said, hey, I don't know, ask Rory Gallagher. Because <laughs> he thought he was, yeah. uh, he was a big fan of Rory, Jimmy was. And Rory, I've never seen a show. I, I've seen Rory. Play, he played on. Remember the um, album Cream Farewell, the very last yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. He opened up for Cream at uh, the Albert Hall in London, and um, that was the third time I've seen Rory play. But he just had something about him. The way he used to play with his guitar, he throw his guitar on the floor sometimes, he'd go, and pull the the guitar cord, say, "Come, come, come, come," and the guitar would be playing as he's pulling it. He'd be playing these notes. You say, mm, okay, come close. Then he pick it up and then he play something. He just had a great, I don't know, he had something about him. And nobody recognized him as being a great guitar player until Jimi Hendrix said those words. Who's the greatest guitar? You're the greatest guitar player in the world, Jimi Hendrix. And he says, no, Rory Gallagher is. But it'll just take one person. So yeah. yeah. And Jimi was, well, Jimi is just amazing. 
that was another thing that turned my ear. You know, it's like Queen. You know, I heard Jimi Hendrix play for the first time and sing "Hey Joe." I thought, what is that? You know, but nothing recently has come out. You know, that has turned my you know, made me listen and go, that that is very inventive. You know. Yeah, uh, at least for me, like, I always say, oh, the new band that I like is Foo Fighters. Then I realized they're from the 90s. I, yeah, me too. Foo, Fight Foo Fighters is the, I was going to say that before. Foo Fighters were the, were the only band that made me listen. Yeah, but that's 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but I still like them. You know, it's yeah. like, I, I can still watch, you know, the, the way he plays, the way he sings, the passion, you know. Yeah. It, it's great, you know. And yeah, is it really 20 years ago? Well, it's 90s something, you know, because it was right after Nirvana was playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I never liked that what Nirvana. I... Same, same thing. Because for for me, like I, I'm exactly that age group, so it was like a thing. But I was like, come on, Pearl Jam, they're the musicians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then like these guys are representing. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Foo, Foo, Foo Fighters. That's that's a band I forgot to mention. But uh, since then, I can't think of anybody. Everything's all this uh, hip hop shit, and I mean that's that's all you see on American, you know, like MTV or whatever, or VH1 or all the other stations we have, music stations. It's all this hip hop stuff, and yeah, I'm just gonna check. You know. yeah, sure. Do I keep going? Yeah, you know, the the hip hop stuff and this uh, auto tuned R and B, you know, and it's a bah, bah, you know like weird noise, you know, like shared it on that record. I, I remember when that came, uh, do, do you believe? And, and I was like, this will never catch on. This is the worst idea ever. I nobody what? I thought, how are they doing that? You know, I thought, is somebody playing it on a piano? She's, got, she's, she's recorded one note here. Do I believe? You know, is, is that how it's done? And somebody's playing the piano because it's so in tune. And Cher used to sing out of tune quite a bit. Uh, but, but it sounded so good. I thought... What is that? It was a bit like syndromes when they came out. I remember Donna Summer had that. Oh, I know some dance record out, and the drums are, boom, 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 and I thought that is horrible. That horrible drum sound. But um, yeah, this everything now is like auto tune. The, the Mariah Carey things and all those other Beyonce, blah 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 blah. It goes on and on, and all those records to me, all those recordings. They just sound the same. I couldn't tell one person from another because it's all so plastic. You know, it just it's not real. I do know what you're talking about, definitely. We have this conversation with my friends and fellow musicians all all the time. Yeah, yeah and it, it's horrible. I, I like to hear a bit of... I like to hear somebody make a mistake. Like and, to, and, and, and it's not to say that there isn't that kind of music, but it's not, you know, in the forefront. It's, no. not, it's not what's popular. No, no. I like to hear somebody croak. You go, ah! You know, I have a... So, a soul for, but the reason they are croaking is because they're giving it their all. You can hear. I, I was just listening to. Um, Aero, I'm a big fan of Aerosmith. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, he's the same. Yeah. He has that natural uh, soul, that feeling, I should say. And and if it's if, it, if it's a mistake, but it sounds okay, we'll keep it in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was listening to just him playing like harmonica, and he was yeah, yeah. He, you know pit, between blows there was yeah. and it was this is the coolest thing yeah. ever. <laughs> Coughing or yeah. spitting or whatever. But they saved all that because yeah. this was like a bootleg uh, yeah. recording, and it was like, yeah, this is like the best part of the whole song. Yeah, yeah, because it's real, and he's playing with the audience, is having a laugh, and you know, and people enjoy. They people enjoy it even if you're really bad sometimes, if, if they're fans, that they because they do realize how hard it is to do that kind of music, keep up the energy all the way through. You know, it's it's hard shit, it really is. But that's why we appreciate it, and we definitely appreciate you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, I think we've been <laughs> rambling on our God knows how long, but it doesn't matter because this is all gold we got. Um, one more thing I definitely got to do. I have this um, ongoing thing on the show that uh, the previous person who was on the show, Piritta Lumo, she's a singer also, uh, she left you a question. So uh, here goes. This is from... Uh, she's the singer in uh, Klasus band Mansana. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe you've met her. Maybe I don't know. But yeah. Well, anyway, doesn't matter. What's it's a uh, it's sort of like a leave a question for the next person. You're gonna get to leave one also. So oh, okay. so you don't have to know who it is. Just you know. So here's her question. It was um it was um what makes you happy? What makes me happy? Singing in tune. I, I give it a good show, obviously. Um, being 
happy is sometimes hard these days because I used to look at singing and playing as being fun. Now, as the years have gone on, it's become work. And um, I want to get back to the happiness again because a lot of, a lot of stuff I do, I, I do a lot of sessions for other albums, you know, with other people. I, I want to feel that happiness I had when I first joined Rainbow, let's say, and when I did solo things on my own before. I would like to do a solo album now where I could just do what I want to do, not necessarily all the same old, ah, you know, killing yourself and maybe go back to uh, your roots yeah, to, to the R&B stuff R &B or pop or well anything along with some heavy stuff as well I've got a bunch of tunes that I've, I've, I've done that I haven't recorded anything yet but I've got all the arrangements together and the ideas and one of the songs in fact is dedicated to my friend Rory Gallagher who Jimi Hendrix talked about and uh, the title is called uh, No One Ever Sang for Rory and uh, they didn't nobody appreciated him I don't mean they actually sang for Rory, but it's, it's a, an expression. Nobody said, God, that guy's good. But it's never too late for that. No. Well, so that, that song is dedicated to him. And I told, do you know Jennifer Benton? I'm not Sorry. sure. No, maybe not. Michael Jackson. She had yeah. the big spiky hair. Ah, yeah, definitely, Jennifer, definitely. One of my friends. And I, I called her and I said, would you like to play on a couple of my tracks. Oh, I want to do a solo thing in a, in a while. She's working in Vegas right now. She suddenly, she called me up and she said, do you know, Graham, I've, got, I've had the luckiest break ever. I've got a six month stint in um, Vegas doing uh, Cirque du Soleil, but it's this show that is very erotic. It's erotic rock and roll music. And so it's like a lot of nudity and whatever. And she said, don't, don't bring your daughter along. Cause I took my daughter to see her um, Oh, God, a few months ago, my little daughter, she's 12, and she'd never seen Jennifer play before, and she was doing a seminar in, uh, in, in one of the music schools in Los Angeles, and so I took her along. She invited me, in, and so I took Taylor, my daughter, along, and um, she went, wow, Daddy, how does she play? Look, it doesn't sound like a guitar, does it? I said, no, I know. She's very, very special, because she studied with Steve, Steve Vai, who was in my, you know, and... Um, so I told her about this and she said, oh my God, he was such a big influence on me. Rory Gallagher was an influence on her. And she's playing, de -de 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 you know, and all that stuff that Van Halen did originally, I know. But, but she had to... She did it on tour. Yeah, she, she didn't, she said it was very strange. She said it was like being in a musical. It wasn't like rock and roll when she played with Michael Jackson. But she did, she's an amazing player. She just really is. Uh, didn't she play with Jeff Beck also? Yeah, she played with Jeff Beck, yeah. They did a show together. And she said when she met him, she, she almost peed her pants. You know, she was like... Ooh. I also remember her saying in some interview that she had to stop wearing earplugs when playing with Jeff Beck. Like, he plays so loud. That, <laughs> yeah, that she, she just had to, you know, like, uh, I can't hear anything. I gotta yeah. take these out. Yeah, yeah, she said... Uh, because I used to wear the in-ear monitors and I found they were really messing me up. I couldn't hear what the guitar was playing. Probably and through the night it get more and more distorted as the volume went up and my guitar player changed pickups, different, you know, different tones. And I wasn't picking up the chords, you know. And I'm going, what the fuck? You know, because I listened to stuff later on. I go, Jesus Christ, I'm under the know all the time. What's happening? And um, I told Jen about it. I said to her, I said, I just can't use those damn things anymore because she was on stage and she was using them. I said, what is that? She said, it's, it's a new sensor, sensor phonics or sensor something. Right? And she says, what, what you have on your pack here, you have a, um, um, a microphone that picks up the room sound. You know, and uh, but they're like two thousand five hundred bucks. Of, oh, I said, I said, oh fuck that! <laughs> you know, to hell with that. So I've gone back to old school, just using the monitors down here because then I can hear, feel the band. When you wear these things, it's like doing that. You know, it's like blocking your ear. Yeah, you, you can hear you great, but you don't hear the band so good. You have a little. Okay, give me a little bit of guitar. I want snare and kick. You know, in here too, and a little bit of keyboards. But as the night went on. Those things get lost somehow. Uh, the sound changes, more people come in, whatever. And the whole sound changes. So I found the best way to keep in pitch with the band and have the feel is just to do it naturally, you know.
Yeah, definitely. And and then you hear the crowd. And uh, for me personally, when it's not time to sing, it's the time to go tell the bass player some stupid stuff. So you gotta hear what he's gonna respond. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's uh, it worked. You know, we played in Poland with White Snake. It was the first time I gave it a, a try, and that was about two months ago or something. And um, we played with them, and um, it was like black and white. I, and my bass player came up to me and said. You're in tune all the way," he said. "That's you don't throw those damn things away, you know." Back to old school. Yeah, back to old school. All right. It works. Hey, yeah. Uh, Makes you go deaf, but <laughs> hey, you know, we we gotta use our ears this, for something this anyway. Is dead. This, this, my right ear is is slightly dead, so I don't hear certain tones. This left ear is like wee all day, uh, tinnitus or tinnitus, and uh, that's from playing with loud bands all my life just about you know but it's maybe it's the price of uh, doing those great shows well well uh, a surprise <laughs> what do you mean no uh, the price it's oh, it's the price, price. Yeah. yes you, what it is yeah i mean i the guitar well when i first played with richie it was like jesus christ and and now my guitar player howie simon he's he's very very loud i mean he's, he's just Incredible! It's too loud sometimes. You know, you can't, can't hear well. I help. Can't hear the drums. You know, it's like, okay, but um, you know, it works. It works. The crowd like it. They like loud guitars. And, you know, well, that's something that is part of rock and roll music, though. Loud, loud guitars and you know, noise in general. Well, it, that's it. Yeah, the louder it is and the more scream it is, the more they love it. They like to join in because all those they start the head banging shit. You know, and the, and the you know, all the old-fashioned, you know, stuff they used to do back in the 80s. But it's kind of funny to see that again now. But now they record everything with their phones as well, which I don't like, because a lot of those things go on YouTube and it sounds like, oh. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be such a problem. It horrible. It sounds yeah. horrible. It, it wouldn't be a problem if they were good. Like, yeah, I want to share. Y yeah, they, they share, but it's usually like, crap. And like the weirdest is like it's turned sideways. You yeah. didn't even fix that. And the sound is all all things coming in out. Who would enjoy this? I don't know. I, I can't stand. It. I've seen you know really good players on there that I've just by chance looked at. And I can't, Jesus Christ, it sounds awful. And it look well, it looks awful as well as sounds awful. It just it sounds like garage bands or something. It just sounds so bad. And same thing with pictures. People will post pretty much any oh, anything. anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ugliest pictures ever. Oh, this is me with you know whoever, and uh, they're usually really, really terrible. And uh, I just wish they. I know Uli Roth when he does gigs, he makes sure that nobody brings phones in, so they have to hand the phones in at the door. Yeah. I know they don't want to do that because they want to do the YouTube bullshit. Uh, but uh, I don't blame him because. It just makes you, even if you sound good during the night, this can make you sound really bad. <laughs> really bad. That's why you maybe have your own guy there to record a little bit something. That yeah, you know yeah. you get the good sound and yeah. the picture. Yeah, but this uh, telephone recording stuff and videos, you know, on YouTube. No, I, I think it should be banned. It should be destroyed. <laughs> Actually, this is probably coming on YouTube, so <laughs> beware. Oh, okay. the, but this is different because you know I asked in advance. And oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter about that. There's no uh, there's no band playing and horrible distorted noise and funny photographs. Once again, Graham Bonnet, ladies and gentlemen, and we have one more final episode for you, and I'm gonna try to have that up for you tomorrow. If for some reason it doesn't happen, Sunday the latest, and uh, yeah, after that, let's see, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna try and start putting this stuff like on, on certain dates, I've been thinking about uh, every Monday and every Friday would be the show, and well, if I got more interviews, I'll just put them all, all on that day, but uh, let me know what you think about that, if you still want me to put out stuff and interviews whenever or would you like to have the shows uh, be more like uh, on certain days so uh, yeah that's about it have a nice weekend and have a nice Friday anyway and uh, talk to you either tomorrow or on Sunday cheers <laughs>